you. Uh, thank you to everyone for attending our webinar, Time Lapse in Five Easy Steps. Uh, my name is James Barber from Time Lapse Solutions. For many years, we've been designing, installing, and managing time lapse systems for all types of organizations and for all sorts of reasons. We want to share with you what we've learned to play a few clips to illustrate the points. This webinar will be extremely useful if you're considering using time. I'm grateful to Nicola, who's helping with the organisation of this webinar. Um, I apologise if any of the videos lag or buffer. Uh, we'll be sending out links uh, after the presentation. Um, we only have half an hour, so we're going to move quickly and it's going to be quite top level. The nature of the subject means that we will assume some knowledge. If you don't understand anything or have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. For some of you, it won't be technical or in depth enough, and I apologise for that. Perhaps we can catch up later if there's anything I haven't covered. We've broken the webinar down into five steps uh, you should consider on a time lapse project, plus how much would it cost? The steps are an overview of the technology, some comments about the location of the camera, power and the issues around it, connectivity and setup considerations and I'll talk about portals or time lapse film and marketing and of course the price. Okay uh, let's get going. I think the first thing to say is we're talking about professional time lapse systems here. We're not talking about doing it on your mobile phone or on a GoPro. This is an overview of how a time map system works. Don't worry if you don't understand all of it. I will go through each of these elements in more detail later. Obviously, there's a camera. Um, this uses power over Ethernet. The important thing about that is it means that the camera can be up to 100 metres from the power source. An Ethernet cable connects to the power over Ethernet unit which in turn connects to the router, which can either use a mobile data SIM or connect uh, to your own internet connection. The router and the power of Ethernet units connect your power source. Uh, this can be 240 volts, 110, solar, or even battery. Images, video, notifications are sent uh, into the clouds where they're stored and displayed in a web portal. In addition, the internet connection allows us to manage your system remotely. So to repeat, the camera is connected via an ethernet cable up to 100 meters long to a power over ethernet unit, which is connected to a router with an uh, internet connection. These are connected to your power source and images and video are sent uh, to a portal in the cloud. Let's start with cameras. Firstly, they need to be weatherproof. Um, there is a standard called the IP rating. IP stands for ingress protection. You will need a minimum of IP65. This is a rating of six from uh, column one, which is no ingress from dust, and a minimum rating of five from column two, which is protection from streams of water ensure heavy rain. If you don't have at least this level of protection, you're going to have problems. Next, resolution. People get quite fixated on resolution, but resolution is not everything. Of course, the higher the resolution, the greater the detail, but you should also consider what you're filming. A small site may not need the highest resolution. On the other hand, if you have if you need a lot of detail on a big site, then you're going to need a higher resolution. There are nearly as many resolutions as there are cameras. I'm going to focus on the three most common, which is 1080p, 4K and 20K. I will also talk about 180 degree cameras and the weather. Starting at the lowest resolution, 1080p, um, 1080p is, it was the original high resolution. I say that uh, 
This is the minimum resolution you should consider for a time lapse project. As you can see from our project for the Royal Mail, it's not bad at all, particularly if it's a small site or you're filming inside or if budget's an issue. It's absolutely fine for online video or if you're simply monitoring the site. Next is 4K or ultra high definition in TV terms. This is now pretty much the industry standard for time lapse cameras and it should be your starting point. The cameras are excellent quality and very good value. It's hard to imagine a project where a 4K camera would not be suitable. This project in Black Fries is a good example of what you might get for a 4K camera. And then there are 20K cameras. If you have a large site like this project for Itachi where they're building a power station and money is not really an issue, you should go for a high resolution camera. As you can see, the details of the image is amazing. I'm not sure it makes any real difference to your ability to monitor a site, but it does make a difference in the time that's film. It allows you to zoom in more um, and get a better film. Whether it's worth the extra cost is really a matter for you. The lens is important. Normally we recommend a lens with at least 107 degree field of view which will allow you to capture everything you need on a project. Anything less could mean you miss something. I also want to talk about 180 degree lenses. Their use with Google Street View means that there is a lot of interest in them and they've been used more and more often. The main advantage is that you can see more of the site while being very close and maybe you need fewer cameras. However, it is at the cost of that rather odd barrel distortion. There is de-warping software which will correct some of this fisheye effect. Have a look at this example of a new sports centre built in Hackney. I think it looks pretty good, but let me know what you think. Um, one thing we can't control is the weather, obviously. It rains and occasionally rain will appear in the shot, but we can mitigate the effect. Firstly, your camera should have a rain cover. Secondly, apply water repellent spray. However, the single biggest thing you can do to reduce rain on the lens is to ensure your camera has a heater to burn off the rain. This means that however bad the weather, the camera clears very quickly. If you don't have a heater, you're going to have problems with the weather. And if it isn't rain, then it's going to be sun. You can't always avoid the camera looking into the sun at some stage in the day, but it is possible to manage this and you should try and minimise it. I'll talk a bit more about the sun in the section about solar power later in the presentation. But here's an example of what uh, weather looks like in a time lapse film. The location of the camera. I appreciate that this is mostly common sense or a matter of opinion or indeed simply practicality. Often there's only one practical place to put the camera and this is very often determined by the power supply. When selecting the location of the camera you're looking to maximize the field, the field of view. In short you're trying to get as much of the sighting as you can and there are two ways to do this. Firstly the lens. As we've already discussed, you need quite a wide lens, a minimum 107 degree field of view. And then you need an unobstructed view. And the best way to get an unobstructed view is by using height. There are lots of ways to get height, including masts, towers, scaffolding, adjacent buildings and cranes. Masts and towers are great. It's a really quick win, easy to install, not problematic at all. If you have a budget for a mask, it's an excellent solution. Using scaffolding is normally the cheapest solution. By far the most common installation is a six meter scaffolding tube clamped to a site office. It's quick and dirty, but it works. And it has the advantage of being close to a power source. 
if you can get your camera on an adjacent building, that's a really great solution. But it's not easy unless you own the building or have a friendly landlord. Most landlords are not that helpful. You can get bogged down in contracts and legal issues. And to try and get a camera on a local authority building, my advice, don't even start. It's a nightmare with a slow process and the amount of paperwork. However, if you can find a friendly landlord, it's a great solution, like this project in Hanover Square. Luckily, the developer had a great relationship with the property manager. Putting a camera on a tower crane is a, is a very good shot, but there are some considerations. Firstly, the installation is obviously more tricky, mainly because you have to deal with the crane operator. But the biggest consideration is that cranes move a lot. You need to consider this when you're making the final film. You can do something to create this in post-production, but it's not perfect. Here's an example of what we mean from this project in King's Cross. You'll need to consider your neighbour's privacy. Here's a project we did for the development of a new wing at a hospital. They, were, they had some issues around the privacy of their quite frankly unreasonable neighbours. We helped, we helped them solve the problem by applying a privacy mask to the shop, which blurs out part of the image. It's pretty essential that your time camera, time lapse camera can apply a privacy mask like we've done in this video. But if you see the blur, it's at the top here. Friends here, you can't look into the, the neighbor's house. Of course, all sites are different and uh, have their own features. Um, we wanted to show you a, a good example of a camera location we installed for Morgan Sindel. The project's for a new school. There is a clear, unobstructed view. The, the camera has height and a, a wide uh, field of view. The camera is stored on an adjacent building, which the developer had access to. The system is powered by solar with panels on the roof of that building. We can see the whole site and the skyline. This gives a shot a sense of place. We immediately know this is in London. The client was really happy. And so do we. So we think. Okay, um, we're halfway. Um, how are we doing? Uh, any questions so far? Brilliant. Thanks for that, James. There was a lot of uh, useful information in that first half. I'm sure our guests would agree. Um, if you do have any questions about anything we've spoke about so far, if you could just pop them in the chat, and I'm sure James will try his best to answer them as best as you can. Um, in the meantime, one question that sprung to mind for me um, was to do with the length of a time lapse film, the length of a project. Um, can you? Do a film over a weekend or I'll do a time lapse film for a short project? Yes, uh, yes, of course we can. The, the issue really is about getting enough content. Normally, mm. you would um, expect to take a, a, an image every 10 minutes. I think if it was a very short project, we would look to take an image every 30 seconds or every minute. So you would get enough content to make a really good film. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for answering that. Um, unless we have any other questions, then I think we can continue with the second half. Okay, of course. Yeah. Power. Um, power for time lapse systems is simple. They draw very little power and they work equally well on 240 or 110 volts. And the power source can be up to 100 meters from the camera. It's simple. You just plug in the system and off it goes. And if the and if power goes down, the system will automatically come back up when the power returns. However, if you're going to have problems with a system, it will almost certainly be power. 
There are two types of issue. One, someone has unplugged a system. However many signs we put up, someone will always do this. The second reason is damage to the Ethernet cable. I understand it is a construction site and these things happen, but please try and avoid breaking the cable. We have repaired so many cables. The good news is that we will be monitoring your system 24 seven. If the camera goes down for any reason, we will immediately email you and then call you to find a solution. You should never miss more than a few images. If you don't have automatic monitoring of your system, you're, you're taking a very significant risk. Another popular option is solar power. It works very well and may fit with your environmental policy. Most of our solar sites are in the UK, but provided there is at least a 200 watt solar panel and a good unobstruct, unobstructed view for the position for the solar panel, you will have very few problems. You do need to consider that with a solar system, it is possible if you get a couple of those really grey weeks in December or January and the sun never comes out, it just never seems to get light, you might lose a couple of days. But that really is the limit of your exposure. The second thing to consider on a solar system on a very long project is you might need to change the battery after three or four years. Finally, I want to talk about battery power. Unless you have a really short project, project, then it's not really a practical solution. And we would advise against using batteries on their own. Internet connectivity is essential to your project. Uh, the system needs to send your images to the cloud so that it can be seen on, on the web portal. You should not consider a time-lapse system that does not have any internet connectivity. The most common solution is to use a mobile data SIM. Uh, you might need to consider bandwidth if you're receiving video. Data overage charges can absolutely kill you. If you want video, the best solution is to have a wired internet connection. Ideally, you would have control of the router so we can set it up. Using Wi-Fi is also an option, but it is slightly less reliable. On a long project, data storage will be substantial. We manage this by taking a picture every 10 minutes during your working hours. And if you're recording video, we will look to overwrite it every month. There are sites with poor connectivity, for instance, basements and very remote sites. However, there are very few sites where we cannot get any connectivity. Time-lapse systems use high gain aerials, which are much more powerful than mobile phones we can normally get enough signal to monitor the system. In these circumstances, we store the data locally as well as in the cloud. So in short, whatever the site, there's always a solution. I remember one memorable project on a remote Scottish mountain. There was no power and just uh, a very little amount of signal, but we made it work. Now I want to talk about uh, deliverables, your web portal and your time lapse phone. Your portal will, will be used a lot. It will allow you to log in remotely and see all, see all your images from the project. For many of our customers, it is an essential tool to manage their site remotely. We display the latest images as soon as you log in uh, but you can also search for an image by date and time. And of course, you can watch a video in real time if you have the bandwidth. You can have a portal with multiple cameras or a portal for each client. You decide about the branding, whether you have passwords, the number of users, or whether you allow clients to access the portal. In addition, we can provide you with a live feed of the latest image to appear on your website. And then there's the time lapse film. This is the fun part for us and for you. It's a chance to be creative. But uh, it's no small matter making a time lapse film. Firstly, you need to download all the images, and that could be gigabytes of data. Then we have to deflick the image. This is um, where we minimize the flipping effect you sometimes get on time lapse movies. Then we process the film. 
that takes several hours and a lot of processing power. Then we add other footage that you have, like drones or other video and photographs. Then we add the music. Then we make all the changes that you want. It's fun and hard work, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, this is the example of one of our favorite films we made for Audi. <laughs> We'll uh, send you the link to the full uh, film. I wanted to add something about using your time lapse video for marketing. marketing. Uh, sometimes companies don't make the best use of this content, and that is a mistake. Uh, you could do more than simply putting the time lapse video on your website. A very quick win is, is, win is a simple case study or press release. You get much more engagement if you include a time lapse movie. But the best use of your film is to add other content like drone footage, photographs, and other video content to make a broader marketing film, similar to the Audi film we've just seen. You should also be editing your film into social media posts, particularly if you're demonstrating a specific subject or skill. Time lapse is very effective on Instagram, and posts will improve your SEO and, of course, may bring you more leads. The other area where time lapse is particularly effective is client communication. Some customers uh, say that their clients expect time lapse on a project and even make it a condition of, of the contract. We often create monthly time lapse films for clients to show the progress of a project or simply explain the work. Project managers really like it a lot, and so do the clients. I urge you to use time lapse for marketing as well as site monitoring, and importantly, use this content throughout the project and not just at the end. Um, now let's talk about money. Um, how much will your time lapse system cost? The first thing you need is a good supplier. Uh, as we've seen, time lapse is not quite as straightforward as it first seen, seemed. I would recommend a specialist and experienced time lapse company rather than someone who adds on time lapse to another service. An inexperienced company working on time lapse rarely ends well. Secondly, you must decide whether you are going to uh, rent or buy. This comes down to cost. The service should be exactly the same either way. We will always manage your system, whatever option you choose. The cutoff is normally around six months. If the project is longer than six months, you should always buy. And then you're going to be asked a lot of questions about your requirement. A good supplier will guide you, but I hope now that you'll know what to expect. So assuming you come to us to ask for prices on a single camera for a six month project with a time lapse film at the end, this is what you should expect. You'll see that there's little difference in the total cost between rental and purchase over six months. The monthly fees for, per for the purchase option cover the cost of data, storage, the portal and support. Obviously, you don't pay these if you're not using the system. I'd say these costs are pretty standard across the industry. If, this, if they are significantly more or significantly less, you should be asking questions. So in conclusion, this is what we would like you to take away. Um, time lapse is great for site monitoring and marketing. Locate the camera as high as possible. You will need a 4K camera with at least 107 degree lens. 
Consider a 180 degree camera. A data scene is the easiest solution for connectivity. Video needs an internet connection. Think about power. Buy the equipment if the project is over six months. You should budget, you should budget 3,800 for a six month project. And Time Match Solutions are a really great company. Okay, um, that's about it. How was it? Any questions? <laughs> Thanks, James. That was an excellent presentation. Um, I'm sure our guests would agree. It's very interesting and uh, useful to learn about best industry practices as well as what happens behind the scenes. So if you do have any questions about anything we discussed, please feel free to put them in the chat now. And I'm sure James will try his best to answer them as best as he can. Um, meanwhile, uh, one question I know we do tend to get asked is regarding copies of the images um, and if clients have access to all of these. Yes. Um, yeah, the client, the client owns the images. It's their intellectual property. So, of course, they can have the images and what we would normally do is give them a link to download them all. Um, we will normally keep the images for six months and then we'll delete them. So we will remind you and urge you to download them um, during that six months. Um, but they're your images and they're, and they're useful for, for marketing. Yeah, okay, thank you for that. Uh, unless there's any Final questions. I think we can uh, wrap this up with a few last points. Great. Um, so thank you to you all for attending our webinar. Um, we're offering a, a free one-to-one -one consultation to everyone that attends uh, attended this webinar. If you'd like to discuss uh, time apps more with us, please email Nicola uh, at the email at uh, this email address. Um, or uh, go to our website at www.solutions.co.uk and she will, she will arrange it. Uh, so either email Nicola or go to our website at www.solutions.co.uk. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, James, just before we go, there is a question that's come through. Um, it said, I'm coming from a photography background. Do you find that there is a large amount of warping on the wide angle lenses? Um, yes, on, on the very wide um, angle lenses, the 180 degrees, yes. Um, but on the smaller, the, the less wide ang uh, angled uh, lenses at, um, I think it's 14 millimeter or whatever it is, which is 107 degrees. I think that is tolerable and we can normally manage that during the post production section. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, unless there's, if there's anything else, uh, you can of course email me um, and I'll be in touch anyway with the, with the video clip that we've used. Brilliant. Thank you very much to everybody. All right, thank you everyone for attending. Have a good day.